Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, you will be learning how to pivot data. Pivoting or reshaping is a data manipulation technique which involves the reorientation of rows and columns of your data set. As data analysts, this technique is essential to have in your toolbox because it enables you to transform data to be easily understood and analyzed. Together, we'll cover how to pivot data using the pivot longer and pivot wider functions in the TidyR package. Let's get started. So by the end of this video, you should be comfortable with the following learning objectives. If you'd like, you can pause and read through the bullet points. However, we'll also come back and review them at the end. And as always, we encourage you to follow along on R so you get more practice. Code along with me. So first, let's load in the packages that we'll need for this lesson. We'll need Tidyverse, Outbreaks, Janitor, Rio, Here, and NitR. At this point, you may be wondering what exactly are long and wide data. Well, perhaps it's best if we go over these terms using examples. Imagine a simple scenario where you have three patients from whom you collect blood pressure measurements on three separate occasions. Now, the data that you collect can be recorded in a number of different ways. For example, it can be recorded in a wide data format such as this, or alternatively, it can be also recorded in a long format such as the figure shown below. Feel free to pause and study the two figures to make sure that you understand the difference between them. In the first figure showing wide data format, you may have noticed that the observational unit, in this example, the patients, occupy only one row, with the measurements or blood pressure measured across different days in three different columns. This contrasts from a long formatted data wherein the observational units are now spread across multiple rows and the measurements occupy a single column. However, in the long format data, you may have noticed that the observational units, again, our patients, now occupy multiple rows with one measurement per row. Here's another example with mock data, but instead, our observational units are countries. Again, in the long format data, each observational unit, now countries, for example, occupy multiple rows with one unique measurement per row. For the wide format data, each country now occupy, again, a single row with multiple measurements across three columns. Now, it's important to note that the examples we've just covered are time series data sets. And this is because the measurements taken were spread across different periods of time, such as days in the first example, or even years in the second example. But this doesn't mean that the concepts of wide and long formats only apply to time series data sets. They're also applicable and relevant to other types of data sets. Take into consideration this example, which shows the number of patients in various hospital units. Now, this isn't a time series data set. However, the concepts of wide and long format data are still the same. In the first figure, again, we see that each observational unit, in this case, the hospitals themselves, occupy only one row with repeated measurements for that unit which are the number of patients in different rooms spread across two columns. But in the long data set, each hospital is spread over multiple rows with measurements occupying one column. Now that we've seen a few examples, it's time for a small practice exercise. Consider the mock data set, wherein we measured temperatures for the countries of Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. When we run this code chunk, and we explore, are you able to identify if this is a wide or long data format? Take your time and answer.
Given that you're now familiar with the general concepts of wide and long data, you may be wondering in which instances should we use wide or long data? Well, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. There's no straightforward answer on what format would be better, but it's up to you to decide. Wide format is generally better for displaying data because it's visually easier to compare your values. And long data is best for some data analysis tasks such as grouping and plotting. And since there's no straightforward answer to when long or wide data should be used, it's essential for you to know how to switch between the two formats easily. The technique for switching from wide to long format or the other way around is called, you guessed it, pivoting. In the second half of this video, we'll show exactly how to pivot between the different formats using functions we mentioned in the intro, which are pivot longer and pivot wider. Let's dive back in. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the second half of the pivoting lesson. In the first half, you became familiarized with the concepts of wide and long data formats, as well as the importance of being able to switch between the two. Now that you understand these general concepts, we can finally cover how to practically apply these techniques. Let's jump back in. To begin, we'll first practice pivoting from wide to long formats using data from Gapminder on the number of infant deaths collected in some countries over the past several years. So let's begin with loading the data set. This is something that you should all be familiar with by now since we've done it quite a few times over the lessons. But if not, no worries, this is the perfect time to practice. So we're going to assign this data set with a name, Infant Deaths Wide. And to load in the data from Data Gapminder, excuse me, we're going to read CSV function here parentheses, quotation marks, and add in the link to the CSV file. We run that, and that loads the data. But to be able to visualize it, we need to recall the data set once more. Infant death, deaths with an S, wide. And you have your output, which is a tibble. In the output that we get when we run the code chunk above, we can confirm that this is indeed a wide format data set because of the following reasons. Our observational unit, which are the countries for this particular example, such as Albania, Armenia, Austria, and so on, only occupy one row each. However, the measurements collected, which is the number of infant deaths for each country, are spread across multiple columns. And this is a definition for wide formats that we went over in the previous half of this lesson. If we want to convert this wide format into a long format, we can use the function pivot longer. And within this function, we can also use the calls argument to specify which columns we want to pivot. Let's see that. First, so let's recall the data set once again and apply our pipe operators, which if you're in a Mac is shift command M and pivot longer because we want to pivot from a wide to a long format argument and specify which columns we would like to pivot. So we'll choose the years 2010 to 2015. In the table, we can see that the wide format data has now been transformed into a long format because our countries now occupy multiple rows with one row per year between 2010 and 2015. So 2010 to 2015. The years in this case are indicated in the variable names, which is not super clear here, but if you're following along with me, you should be able to see it. And all the death counts occupy the variable values in this column. Now, if you want to rename the default variables into something more descriptive, like I've mentioned, you can use the arguments names to 
to rename the variable into years because that is what that variable describes and values to something a little bit more intuitive which are which are the deaths count for each country and here from the table we can see that this renaming was successful the variable names has been renamed into year and the variable values has been renamed to deaths count if you want to make further adjustments such as removing the x from the front of the years this is also possible to remove the x in front of each year you can use the function parse number from the package read r in tidyverse which extracts numbers from strings so in order to do so shift command m for our pipeline and we're going to mutate recall from the previous lesson year parse number and year to remove again the x in front of each year and to confirm yes this was successful again it's not totally visible but for this column it's year and you should have no x's and with this we finally have a long format data set the variables are intuitive there's no annoying x's in front of the years and we can store this data for later use and to do that we just assign it into a different name deaths long option minus for the assignment operator and when you run that code you should now have saved your long formatted data for now it's time for a practice question using the euro births wide data set from eurostat convert this wide format into a long format applying the techniques that we just covered take your moment and check in when you finished So now we've gone over how to pivot from wide to long data formats using the pivot longer function. But before completely switching gears and learning how to pivot data the other way around, let's first consider in which instances you're likely to encounter data in a long format. First of all, wide data tend to come from external sources, such as the previous examples we went over from Gapminder and Eurostat. In comparison, long data is likely to be created by you whilst data wrangling. Now recall that you have done this somewhat in the previous lecture of group by and summarize manipulations. Let's now look at an example of a long format data set using patient records during an Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone. So we'll extract this data from the outbreaks package and we'll perform some simplifying manipulations like extraction, um, the year from the date, as well as select and rename, similar to what we've gone over with the wide format. So outbreaks as tibble. Oops. And we're going to mutate the year from loop for date year on set oh date of onset there you go and select patient ID district year of onset year. So to recap, this particular line extracts the year from the date, and this line selects and renames it. 
So if we run this, from the output, we can see that we have each patient's ID number, their district, and the year in which they contracted Ebola. And each row corresponds to one patient. And it seems like it's now in a long data format according to the definition that we went over earlier. But it's not a long formatted data quite yet. But now if we group the data set by district, which counts the number of patients recorded within the year, we can see in the output that this is now what we would consider a long format data set because our observational units, which are the districts, now occupy multiple rows, so two each specifically, and one row for each measurement, which is the year. So as you can see, long formatted data is often obtained as an output of grouped summaries amongst other data manipulations. And now that we have a long data format, how about pivoting it the other way to a wide format? Well, this process is fairly easy. And as the counterpart of the pivot longer function to convert from a long format to a wide format, we'll now use the pivot wider function. Now within the pivot wider function, there are two arguments that we need to specify, which are values from and names from. So values from will define which values will become the core of the wide data format. In our case, these values were in the variable n. On the other hand, the names from argument identifies which variable to use to define columns in the wide format. In our case, this was the year of onset variable. Now in the output, we can confirm that the long format data we originally had has been transformed into a wide format because our observational unit, which is the districts in this case, not only occupy a single row per district with the measurements, which are the number of patients that contracted Ebola within the year, now are spread across two different columns. It's not very visible, I, I understand, but this would be the column for 2014, and this would be the column for 2015. So now, there you go, we have transformed a long format data into a wide format data set. It was mentioned earlier that long formatted data sets are best for a majority of data analysis tasks. Now we can justify why that is by going through some common operations that you'll perform on long formatted data. And in each case, you'll be performing these similar operations on wide formatted data and hopefully observe why performing these similar operations is trickier on wide formatted data. First, let's talk about filtering group data, which is again, very easy on long formatted data sets, but a little more complicated for wide formatted data. Once again, using the infant deaths data set and example, imagine that we want to answer the following question. For each country, in which year had the highest number of child deaths? So with the long format data, all we need to do is indicate the data set, group by the country, which is your observational unit, and you want to filter by the deaths count, which is the measurement in this case. And since we want to figure out um, in which year had the highest number of child's death, we would indicate max and the variable, once again, deaths count. Now at the output, we can easily see that for each country, we'll take Afghanistan as an example, Afghanistan had its highest number of infant deaths in 2010, for United Arab Emirates, 2011, for Armenia, 2010, and so on and so forth for the other countries. Now you can see that with the long formatted data, answering this question is very easy and intuitive. Practically, to answer the same question with 
a wide data format, you can try and approach using a special dplyr function called rowwise. So with rowwise and mutate, you would have to specify the years. In this case, it would be 2010 to 2015, which is when data was collected. Now, when we run this data set, we see that the maximum number of infant deaths is shown in the last column, like here. But unfortunately, we do not know what year this number corresponds to. Taking, for example, Afghanistan, if we go to the last column, we see that the maximum number of infant deaths was 74,600. But to know the year to which this number corresponds to, we have to reference it back to the columns. So going through the columns, we see that this number occurred in 2010, which answers our question. But this is quite a hassle, as you can see, especially for large data sets. Now, there are solutions to this, but all are quite involved and somewhat painful, especially if you are just starting out. So we recommend that you simply pivot from a wide formatted data into a long formatted data using the functions that we covered previously here, which are group by and filter. Apart from filtering group data, summarizing can also be difficult on wide data formats. Consider again the infant deaths long data set. And now we want to ask for each country, what was the mean number of infant deaths in the standard deviation in deaths? Again, with long data, this is quite simple. So using the functions group by and summarize, we can figure out the mean and standard deviations that we're looking for. count and since this is for standard deviation oh, similar deaths count now we see in the resulting output it's easy to infer the mean and standard deviation for each country for example for Algeria the mean is this value, the standard deviation is this value. For Angola, similar, mean and standard deviation, and so on and so forth for all of the countries within the data set. Easy. But with wide formatted data, again, the solution is less straightforward. If we use the rowwise function with mutate along with this argument, in the following output, we have this. Similar to the previous example, we see that the mean can be found in the last column. However, you may notice that the standard deviation is nowhere to be found. And this can be quite difficult to calculate. And you may find solutions to code this. However, to be completely honest, even we haven't found a solution. So once again, we really recommend simply pivoting a wide formatted data to a long format data using the functions that we went over, group by and summarize for summarizing group data and so that you have a more intuitive, more simple output to answer the questions that you may have for your data set. Finally, one of the data analysis tasks most hindered by wide formatted data is plotting. And you may not yet be familiar with ggplot, so we'll continue and look at the figures without mentioning the code so much. But what you do need to remember is that plots in ggplot, or many plots within ggplot, are only possible with long formatted data. Consider again the infant deaths long data set, which we've been working with for a while now. If we want to plot the number of deaths for Belgium per year, we'll use the following code. Again, we won't get too into it, but we'll just look at the figure to explain. Here, the plotting works because we can assign the variable year to the x-axis. In a long formatted data, year is already a variable on its own. However, in a wide formatted data set, there is no such variable to pass on to the x-axis, which is why this plot would not be possible.
Now consider another plot that would not be possible using a wide formatted data. Once we run this code, we obtain the following plot. The reason why this figure is not possible with a wide formatted data set is the same reasoning we covered in the previous example we just saw. We need to tell the plot which variables to use for the x and y axes. Additionally, these variables must also have their own columns. And this is only possible, if you can recall, in long data formats. In a wide data format, the measurements are spread across multiple columns, which is why for plots such as these is not possible. During this session, we've mainly covered simple examples of pivoting. However, in the real world, it may not be so straightforward. And this is because real world data can often have missing information or even errors to prevent you from accurately pivoting your data set. In those instances, we recommend looking at the official documentation, which was prepared by the TidyR team, linked here, as it's quite rich in examples. So we encourage you to default to this resource if you're having questions and are getting quite frustrated. Alternatively, you could also post your questions about pivoting on forums like Stack Overflow. By now, if you've been paying attention, you should know the difference between long and wide data formats. You should also know how to pivot between long to wide data formats using the function pivot wider. Alternatively, you know how to pivot from wide to long using the function pivot longer. And finally, you understand why long formatted data is much preferred for plotting and data wrangling in R. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for paying attention. I'll see you in the next lesson. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes, and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.